Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep number something I'm not sure what number I'm on at the moment I only listen to this or watch this video if you're watching on YouTube when you can safely close your eyes and allow yourself to be bored into a sense of comfort and calmness Blah, 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 blah. You know, when I was, uh, back in the days when I was a counsellor, I always had this little fantasy. And I never did it. But it was just like, as a, I thought it would be a funny thing to do, is to just stand up at the end of the session, and just put my coat on and just walk out. <laughs> Not even say goodbye I mean, I'm, it wouldn't be funny for the other person, perhaps, but just as an inappropriate thing to do. Anyway, that's not really relevant to this. <sighs> God, I'm quite tired myself. I've had a, a couple of days of unusual sleeping activity and um, I've been awake since I don't know what time about 10 Uh, why? Well, why not sit back late? I mean, it's just gone twelve o'clock midnight. I've been up since about ten this morning, but I didn't have much in the way of sleep during the night because I'd been spending a lot of time in bed because I wasn't feeling particularly well. I've just had a Clementine as well. And it's, I'm on a, bit, uh, a semi, got a bit of a semi um, health kick going on. So I'm going to try and to eat more vegetables and fruit and things like that. So I bought some, uh, I'm not sure how many clementines I got in the, in the packet. They're not really packets, are they? They're kind of bags but with holes in like wire wire bags but not wire like little sacks I don't know if you know what I mean you can see through them and you have to sort of rip them open to get to the tangerines or clementines yeah clementines There was a special offer going on where you could get, um, I think it was one bag for two pound or two bags for three pound. So I, I thought, well, do I want that many? So I was in Iceland, the, so it's a shop. You know, I didn't travel a long distance just to get some clementines it was a fair distance but it was a shop it was local-ish and I was just standing there thinking well is it worth you know, would I eat that many would I eat it's got to be at least one, two, three, four, five, six at least six maybe even eight clementines per bag that's quite a lot to get through but I thought I'd give it a go you know it's a not really a gambler but I thought on this occasion 
and something as important as this, you know, citrus fruits, it's, it's, it's an important, it could be life changing, so I thought, yeah, it's vitamin C, isn't it? It's, uh, I, just, I need to have to be careful though, because they can get quite squirty, aren't they? Clementines, they're quite squirty. And you don't want that stuff spraying in your in your face, so especially if it gets in your eyes. It stings, really stings. So I've got some uh, clementines. They're in the cupboard now. I just had one just now before doing this, starting this recording. Had a clementine, and uh, oh, <sighs> on the packet it said it said easy pill. You know, actually, that's the title of them. So I don't know what country they buy them from, but it's it's weird that there's actually a specific brand called Easy Peel Clementines. I thought they'd be the most popular. So I guess there must be some some types of clementines that are just really, really difficult to peel. But these ones are uh, they're not like the chocolate, you know the chocolate eggs, you know the the um, orange eggs, I forget what you call them but it's like the chocolate and they come in the shape of a, you know, round kind of orangey shape, wrapped up and you, you, can, you kind of got to bash it, you got to bash it in order for to, to get what you want out of it, you just you bash it a bit and then it breaks up and you can pull the things apart because otherwise it's stuck together so I like them but they're a bit too much a bit too I can have maybe one or two little pieces but they don't they don't satisfy my chocolate needs I don't know if it's the flavour I don't know maybe the orange feels a bit too close to health food you know I think uh, chocolate and healthiness don't seem compatible somehow you know I don't want the chocolate that tastes like arsenic you know I don't want it to taste like horrible or anything just I quite like mint but again not so, uh, I like after eight mints and the is it matchmakers the ones where they're they're like twigs you know they're like long long thin bits and they're crispy with uh, mint you can get orange ones as well I think but I do like the the mint flavored ones but after eight mints I don't know if you've ever had them or wherever you live they're basically in a oblong packet and I'm not sure if it's a culture thing if it's just like an English thing or whether people do it in other countries because I don't I've not really not really lived really any other countries but really uh, briefly in Ireland for a little bit but and um, Bogner Technically, it's not another country, but if you've ever been there, it's it is, and it's it's nice, nice place actually. And um, the after eight mints, they're like in this oblong packet. And I, I must, for me, it's like a traditional English thing or British thing. Again, I don't know if they have if they have them in Scotland or Wales, you know. So I, I really don't know if they. All I know is that I was kind of brought up. I was brought up in in 
I was brought up in England, but I did live in Newcastle. I lived, so that's the north, but I've spent most of my life in the south. But I think it's like a, the whole of the country kind of has these after eight minutes. And it's really strange, I know that you might not find this very exciting, but I'm feeling quite excited about it. Because it's a traditional thing. For me, it actually, something like that actually means, it means something to me. It has meaning, like an emotional meaning. It's not just chocolate in itself, because that's, they are particularly beautiful. This, it's a personal preference, but it's dark chocolate and it's mint inside like a mint gel kind of they're very thin kind of waif, wafer thin kind of and they come in these little um, envelopes these little um, so they're, bl they're kind of black slim envelopes so they come in and they all slid into these little slit um, slots it's a little bit like I imagine I want to in some ways I think of it in a sense of it's what I only imagine is in a I don't know some kind of hospital environment um, where they got slides with <laughs> bacteria on or something and they're all slid down and they're kind of all divided and separated, that kind of thing, but but in a more um, Christmassy chocolate way, as opposed to, yeah, who knows, I mean, I don't, you know, I, I don't know, I'm just, whatever it could be, that it could be collecting samples for, um, various strains of whatever dribbles and stuff but but after eight mints are really beautiful I don't know if you have them where you live but go google it have a look online maybe not now because of course you're entranced into falling into a deep sleep through my boring conversation it's, which is wonderful. But these after eight minutes, they're really, 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 really nice. And I can I can eat a lot of them. Because they just melt. They just, across anything melts if you've got a hot enough surface, but I, I don't mean they melt as in, you know, hold it over a candle. No, 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 or Bunsen burner, no. I mean, when you put them in your mouth, they seem to just dissolve. So not so much melt, more dissolve. More connecting with the tongue and some kind of magic happens. And as if your tongue serves, it yeah, becomes a, a serving dish for, for these beautiful little chocolate treats and your entire all your taste buds and your body can enjoy the sensation of that little bit of mint and dark chocolate I haven't had any chocolate for three days I'm not sure if that's coming across I think it's to be affecting my what I talk about I've got a bit of a craving for chocolate at the moment, but it's okay. I've had a pregnancy test and everything's fine. So, I had a weird few days, but I won't go into much detail, but 
I ended up going to the doctors and the doctor said uh, but, but actually what, what it was is I was going to the shop to get some food so I went into the shop waited for the bus and went into the shop I was with my friend and we decided to get some food and he got what he wanted and I got what I wanted and then we paid for it and everything kind of went to plan really as far as that I mean it was the the point where I was trying to decide whether or not to pay three pound for two bags of Clementine or just the one bag but there wasn't that much I needed to get I got a cucumber it's quite a big cucumber actually it's uh and one two three four six tomatoes but it was a packet of six tomatoes so the so I got them and a cucumber and what else did I get so I got the, the clement, clementines or two packets I chose I decided to go with the two packets and I got a packet of bananas but I think there was only four bananas in the packet bananas have become a lot more expensive lately I found I tinkered with the idea of maybe getting an apple or a few apples but they didn't seem to have any and well I don't think so but then as I was trying to look somebody else came up to the the vegetable sort of area and was also looking at stuff and I just I just didn't just I felt it was for me time for me to move on really I kind of felt like I'd used up my allotted time studying the various products available so I just just did just move on what else did I get so I got some bread I got a bit of uh, got a few little sandwich bits because I'm mainly eating sandwiches at the moment and then I got myself got some milk and you know I haven't had any hot cross buns or tea cakes for I think since Thursday maybe Friday maybe Saturday or Sunday I can't remember but not for a few days anyway so I thought I'd treat myself and I suppose in some ways it's not really a treat if it's something you do regularly maybe I don't know but you know, as I was looking at these tea cakes, I was thinking to myself, I want them. And why not? I mean, they're just tea cakes. It's not like I was wanted to steal a police helicopter, you know? This is just tea cakes. I paid for them. I think they were about one pound so I don't know what that would be in your currency where you live because you might not live in in England you may live in Leighton you may live in Newcastle they're in English places Shropshire Shrewsbury where else um, yeah you could live in those places or you might live in America, I live in Mountain View or in Phoenix, Arizona or Delaware, is Delaware or is that a shop? I don't know. Or maybe you live in France. And if you live in France you I do wonder those people that listen to me that live in other countries and I wonder, is it people, so if someone in France is listening to me, because I know I do, I have an audience in France. And I wonder, is it 
just not just but is it English people that have that live in France that are listening to me or is it French people that are listening to me and I'm happy whatever way you know either way it's all good for me I'm just pleased to that someone's listening to me even though these uh, seem a bit pointless in some ways but still I still continue to do them and I do wonder if the people that are in Russia I've got people listening to me for in, who live in Russia and is it a, are you are you Russian or are you English and you live in Russia or maybe you're on holiday and you're just listening to me while you're on holiday or taking me with you you know and people who are listening to me from Spain and Italy I just always wonder I have this little little uh, thing just thinking because I know that with SoundCloud and I'm sure with all the podcasts not all the views and all the stats are correct because you know I've been doing this for a long time and I notice trends and sometimes I'll upload a new session and I'll have a bunch of people within seconds start following me or you know and I say well and I'll go to them or they might like me like my you know or something like that and I'll go to their page and it's an advert their page is just an advert trying to sell um, advertising something on their page they don't produce any sessions they don't do anything they just it's just a advertising maybe an album or a song or yeah you know, something else on the internet I do wonder about some of the pod hosts whether or not they pay people to to like and to visit and to follow people so that they continue to pay to use a service So I do wonder if there's something going on there. So maybe not all the all the plays and that I get on SoundCloud are correct. Maybe they're not. Same with Spreaker. I don't know. It's hard to know, really. I know that some are. I know that look quite a few are because I get well, I get the same people or the same areas you know week in week out so it's unlikely they've got the same you know they're going to pay someone to do that and also some people tell me where they're from and what they're doing they're listening to me from and all that stuff I've got an itchy neck oh So yeah, I just uh, here's a thing that fascinates me. Just, just wonder where people are listening to me from. listening to me from is that a correct sentence now where the audience is but it's been an okay week or well, the last seven days I've had over 5,000 plays and downloads so based on that it's about 250,000 a year so it's growing it's growing 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 I had an 
I had an extra person um, download my free app for the hypnotic buffet so I had that today so that was nice I've now had three people download it in the last week so based on that I should have so what's that 52 yeah if I continue this for the whole year I might be able to get over 100 oh I had 3 and 1 person unsubscribed so it's 2 so it's over 100 a year if, if it continues how it goes so it's uh, not, not many is it really so I'm just going to keep my little eyes on that one see what occurs with it if anything so yeah I was in Iceland I thought why, why not just have some tea cakes I like tea cakes and the ones they do in Iceland are particularly juicy. They're very, very, got a lot of fruit, currants and stuff like that in there. Very nice. And also cut already. They're already, I was going to say circumcised, but they're already ready to put into the toaster. So I don't have to, I don't need to put them under the grill, I can just put them into the toaster because they're kind of evenly cut all the way through which makes makes it a lot easier, you know generally which is nice it's one of those little things that I have to treat myself you know it's sit here and have a tea cake a drink and just relax and by, by drink I don't mean alcoholic drink because I don't drink alcohol anymore I don't like I don't like alcohol anymore it doesn't really doesn't do anything for me at all never liked the taste anyway but you know, lager, I was never really much of a a spirits person and I never got into the Alka pops, you know, the, the stuff that tastes nice, you know, because I was just never got into that stuff really. I tried it when it first came out, but so yeah, I just don't not really into alcohol I've got nothing against it I just don't really doesn't really do anything for me anymore I used to drink regularly for years just lager nothing else but yeah so I was in getting a shopping and Yeah, it's just very basic stuff, really. I so I got some milk, and got some bread. Got the tea cakes. Did I mention about the tea cakes? Yeah, I decided to get some tea cakes. I also got some clementines. It was uh, so I was only going to get one packet. Because I think there's about eight, <laughs> eight clementines in a packet. Oh, I'm nearly coughing there, excuse me. And uh, I think I fly just, oh, you know, the other day, the other day I was walking in the field with Andre, and Andre's my little boy, he's my ferret, but he's my son. 
So we were walking through the park, or through the park, it wasn't a park. It was, why are parks called parks? Because you can't park in them, because parks are usually places where families and people, pedestrians, go walking on the grass. You don't generally have cars in there, do you? So I wonder why they call it a park. Anyway, I was in the field, and it's it's near a tr uh, like a railway track. I say near, and it's pretty much very close. It's the railway is just the other side of it. It's not really the other side, but it's a fence, and the railway is a bit higher up. And but it's quite quite distance. It's not a long. It's, a long way to get to the railway track but it's there's a lot of thistles and fossils and uh, fancy stuff and you know trees and bushes and you know rabbits and you know very different things between the field and the actual railway track so I was walking with Andre. He was getting quite hot, even though it was early evening. But he was, because what happens is he, I, t I let him go. Sometimes I, I, I keep him on the lead, but I let him run free. That way, if he if he starts to sort of run off in the wrong direction, I can just put my foot down on the lead and stop him. Otherwise, I can just run after him or walk really quickly, and he gets a good exercise and he gets to run free, which is beautiful to watch. Um, so I'm walking with him. I think I'm holding his lead at this point. Well, that's particularly it's relevant, but I think I was holding his lead. I think I had his lead in my left hand because we walk in down the field like the edge of the field but on the right hand side is where the railway track is so I'm holding him from the left because I suppose I'm trying to keep him away from the edge of the field I'm not sure it might he might have uh, dictated that by the, the his own particular movements on the day I don't really recall precisely how he was because he, he, he variates you know sometimes he he keeps moving from one side to the next which can be a bit hazardous really you know end up tripping over him and stuff which I don't want to do. So I'm just walking it. I'm, I'm walking with him. He's in front of me. Well, he might have been to the side. I think he was in front. It wasn't... He could have been, even been behind me, you know. I can't remember. I don't... I don't rightly recall. It's, I think he was probably in front of me. Or to the side. Or behind. One of them. And... A fly flew up my nose. Or something. I think it was, I, you know, I say fly because it was flying, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't a blue bottle or that kind of fly. It was something. It wasn't a hornet either. I don't think a hornet would fit up there. I would definitely wouldn't want one trying. Anyway, I was just thought I'd tell you that story. Andre's gone for a little walk. He's gone to the front door now. He's probably going to be jumping up at the radiator any minute now and wanting to go out. Or might, he might actually be jumping up over me. I'm just looking for somewhere to do a wee. 
seems to always do this whenever I'm doing a recording. He seems to decide to go into his cage and start eating. So he's eating his food now, he's eating his dinner. be quite good to have a, a visual of him doing that but just imagine he's in his cage he's on the he's got one one two three four four different floors of his cage including the you know the bottom so he's got one flight of stairs which leads to one floor second flight of stairs which leads to the second floor third flight of stairs which leads to the third floor which is where he is now it's where his his uh, bowl of food is and then there's another set of stairs that goes up to the what is it one two three fourth floor which is where his dry food is that's where his water is that's also where his hammock is where he can climb into the hammock He's also got another um, bedding which he can get into as well, which is a separate place, which is probably more for winter than, than the summer. And he can cozy up in there if he wants. But that's open all day long, really, at the moment. He just goes in there when he wants to. Generally, when I go to bed, that's when he goes to bed. Sometimes he's okay with it, but other times he's really not. He's just. He looks at me and says, How dare I? How dare I put him to bed to sleep? He doesn't want to go to sleep. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Of course, I have to imagine these things that he's thinking there's no way of really knowing is there oh, let's have a little drink creaking chair I'm sure this chair didn't used to be this creaky I have to figure some way of de-creaking it well I just heard some weird noise really weird so he's been eating his food he's got some like cat food that he eats and he's just come out and he's wiped his face on the carpet he must have got some on his maybe on his nose or on his mouth and he's just wiped it all over the carpet just to dry it to clean his face off oh, that's so cute dirty but cute considering what else he wipes on the carpet but let's not go down that road let's not focus on the <laughs> those things so he's now in his little crawly um, tube thing that he's got it's like this bendy tube and he goes in there every day and he loves going in there sometimes he goes in just from one end to the other and that's it we go in and then he'll crawl backwards out again. Other times he'll go in there and he'll he'll be in there for ages. Just I think he because he knows that he, I, I can't get to him when he's in there. I think he he likes the safety of not that he, that he if it needs to feel safe because he's safe with me, but I think he likes that to the enclosed space but at the same time it's his he owns it you know 
That's his property. He's a happy boy. He's gonna come and he's gonna come and climb on me in a minute, I reckon. He's building up to it. He's either gonna jump up and down on the radiator. Or he's gonna come and climb on me. Or he's gonna grab hold of his girlfriend, which is my old slipper, and make some unusual sounds in the background. When I say the background, it's not a euphemism, I mean in the background. You'll, you'll hear it. Well, I, I mean, you might not hear it, I'll hear it. He's, he's quite noisy. He's very passionate. He's, very, he's a very passionate young man. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about the point of these sessions because I know I imagine it someone for the first time listening to this and maybe not uh, not knowing what on earth I'm doing it's just listening there's this bloke just talking about absolutely nothing for an hour how why why does it happen how can this exist and there is a reason behind what I do. Yep, here he is. Andre's up on my lap. By the way, if you if you wanna and he's all wet. Which is lovely. Thanks for sharing your wetness with me, Andre. If you wanna see what Andre looks like, go to my Facebook page. And there's pictures of him on there in all his beautifulness and you can yeah mm, beautiful yeah just google and just you know facebook my name it's on there it's easy to find yes I am there's lots of pictures of Andre there's some videos as well it is beautiful, little beautiful highness, isn't it? Yeah. He's now cuddled up to me. I think he might go to sleep. He, he finds my voice boring as well, don't you? Yeah. You're lucky to have a boring daddy, aren't you? You just listen to my boring voice and drift off asleep. There's nothing else to think about, is there? Everything's just relaxed and calm. It's nice to have that release, that, that sense of comfort that can come with the familiarity of my voice, regardless of the words that I might say regardless of the some of the silly stories I might tell or, doesn't matter it's just about it's about a feeling <laughs> that was Andre by the way sneezing sorry if that was a bit loud it wasn't me, so I take no responsibility for it at all. I am not responsible for Andre's sounds, the noises that he produces. And he does produce quite a few different noises. But at the same time, I don't care because I love this little boy. You're my beautiful little son, aren't you? Yeah? He's gone to sleep. 
you just cuddle up to with me and you're just falling asleep aren't you just falling asleep now it's awake again doesn't take much for you to sleep and wake up does it sometimes it'll just lay on me stop sneezing sometimes it'll lay on me and it'll, it'll fall asleep like within seconds and then it'll suddenly wake up and it's as if he doesn't know where he is or who I am and why he's hanging upside down he just doesn't you know how did I get into this carrier bag? Where did this trampoline come from? It doesn't know where he's surrounding us. And he just gets really, really sort of surprised and runs off. And because he's so bendy, he can fall asleep in some of the most weird positions ever. I've seen him where he's, he's practically only got one leg left in the hammock and he's just balanced some kind of weird balancing act and he's asleep <laughs> it's, it's very quite funny to watch and no matter what I do I can't seem to wake him up so that he falls but yeah not that I would do that it's very cute some people sort of say oh you know but when I take him out the amount of kids over the years that have said oh they say to their parents oh can I have one and I look and the parents look at me and I look back at them and we both nod at each other and no they have a lot there's a lot of work they're not it's more work than you get with a dog or a cat really He's well, in a way, the dog you need to take the dog out, I need to take him out, but that's more my you know. I, I taught him that if I'd never took him out, then he wouldn't know, would he? I suppose, but he has trashed this place. When I say trashed, you know, from what it was, I had a brand new carpet in it, and he ripped the carpet up. Um, but I live quite a minimalist lifestyle, which is handy when you can't no money. It's, uh, it's, 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 use, you know, it's useful not to have much stuff. And I can make excuses saying, no, I'm a minimalist, but actually I just don't have any money to buy anything but I've got what I need really I've got a television and I've got well my underwear is beginning to wear out a little bit my socks especially so I do need to start getting a few more clothes but it's all it's, it's all money isn't it it's all you know I've made a few financial cuts. I talked about it in my hypnotic buffet yesterday, but I think I can talk about it in this because I'm not going to assume that those that listen to this will have listened to the hypnotic buffet because we've all kind of got our own preferences, I suppose, about what we like and what we listen to, and you know. But what I did is got rid of my Netflix and another uh, like now TV thing which was a, a Sky TV package that I was paying as I go you know monthly so I've got rid of those I have got rid of my website hosting package so I was paying 20 20 22 pound or whatever a month for that so I got rid of that and I'm now using, I've, got, I've gone back to Blogger. So I'm using Blogger because it's free. And my website, jasonnewland.com, is now connected to there. Um, also, we 
got rid of a couple of other things as well. So the only, the main things I'm paying for now is SoundCloud and Spreaker. They're the two main like podcasts that I'm paying for. Spreaker's a lot more than SoundCloud. But there are no other payments. This, that's pretty much it. Apart from you know all the bills and stuff that I've got monthly. And the internet, you know, everything I need in order to run this stuff. See so yeah, that that's okay. What else should I get rid of? Um No, nothing really. I was a bit ill a couple of days ago. Went to the doctors today and had a check up. And the doctor really didn't seem very interested in meeting me. Now, admittedly, I didn't expect there. I didn't expect, you know, her to be standing there playing the trumpet. You know, as I entered the room, I didn't expect anything fancy no cake or anything like that I didn't, I didn't expect that Andre's making his noises in the kitchen in case you're wondering what that sounds like a little monkey literally sounds like a, like a little a little tiny little monkey jumping around making it like squeaky monkey noises that's what he does when he's in the throes of passion So, what was I talking about? Was I talking about monkeys? No, I wasn't talking about monkeys. What was I talking about Iceland? And I tell you that I got some clementines. I was going to just get one pack. It was, I think it was two pound a pack. It might have been two pound fifty or two pound twenty. Or two pound ten even, or maybe two fifteen or two twenty five. I suppose it could have been one ninety five, because it still takes it over nearly four pounds. It's still a saving, but they did that. They had a special offer, two packs for three pound. But I ended up doing it. I thought about it. And I thought, oh, yeah, why not? I think what happens with me and fruit is I've got this ongoing thing. Like, I feel at home with bananas. I'm a banana lover. I've, I've always, I've always appreciated a, a nice banana. It's something about them. I just. I like the taste, as long as they're ripe. I don't like the under, under ready ones. You know, the ones that are just hard and you know, it's all oh, it doesn't no, not it's not ready yet. The thing is, it's it's hard because once you've opened it, it's not ready yet. What do you do? It's, it's not like a you can't just do the zipper up again because they don't have zippers, do they? Like the cartoon characters, where the banana would have a zipper, like a a fly on a jeans, used to in the old days, or maybe still do. I don't know. It's like a waste of a good banana. Anyway, I like bananas. That's the point. I quite like an apple. But I've got a tendency, a tendency if I buy fruit, is to just leave it in the cupboard and not eat it. And that's it's wasteful, I don't want to do that. And I'm also buying the fruit to eat it for health reasons, you know, to put fibre into my body and just to have the, the natural sugars from apples and oranges and bananas. It's natural fruit, natural uh, sugar. 
natural energy and also fibre and I suppose vitamins and you know whatever else comes with it I didn't get any apples today I just got the got some clementines though got some clementines I've got two packets and I've got some bananas I think I've only got one packet of bananas but bananas are more expensive they seem to be going up in price and I'm sure it was something like one pound ninety five or it might be one pound twenty five but I don't think there's any more than four bananas that could have been six but I think it's four so that's just four it might sound silly to say but that's just four bananas I, I don't generally eat more than one banana at a time but that's just four pieces of fruit it just seems that with the clementines and I don't, don't want to go on about it but the clementines it seems a much better value because of the amount that I got I must have got about eight in each pack for three pounds, that's 16 clementines for, for three pounds. Just seems like a much better deal. But then it's a different fruit, isn't it? So uh, I don't think I'd want to take a toasted clementine sandwich. You know, toasted banana sandwich is lovely. I don't have, um, peanut butter but I can't imagine peanut butter and clementine toasted would go together it might do but I've, you know never tried it I don't want to dismiss the idea but I just you should see some of the carrier bags that are in the kitchen on the kitchen floor and he basically melted them the things that he's done to those carrier bags you know if if he was a human if he was like living in a human world it he'd never get out of prison he, you know he'd be there for the rest of his life no parole He's, he's done some damage to those bags. Some of the handles are just vanished. But he loves carrier bags, I don't know why. There's something about bags. He likes to... I don't know what it is, it's just his, it's his thing I suppose. And toes, he likes toes as well. Again, I don't know why. Never been, never really been into toes myself. I don't, I've got nothing against toes or feet. I do give a good foot massage. But as I've got older, I just find it's harder, harder to reach them. But when I, when I can, it feels nice. And I did a couple of courses on reflexology as well when I was younger. So I kind of know my way around a foot. That could be my epitaph, that could be on my on my gravestone. He knew his way around a foot. So yeah, that's um Things like feet and legs. For me, it's just like something that you use to walk with. You know, I never really saw them as some kind of. A, I know people, some people have. You know, a specific enjoyment of certain parts of the body, and I've not really ever been a, a foot person. or fingers or knees or elbows 
or collarbones or shoulders but each to their own well, I should start really shouldn't I should start to talk about something so I went to the doctors so I had had a bit of a, a weird thing a couple of nights ago and I won't go into any squeaky details such a squeaky chair I won't go into any major details but I just became a bit unwell so I got myself checked out and had a blood pressure checked blood pressure was perfect had my pulse taken pulse was perfect and what else um, I think a couple of other things that she did and everything was fine blood pressure just you know it's kind of strange it's like wow so I'm I'm actually relatively healthy which is quite cool maybe it's all the clementines I eat mind you I went to a doctor's before I actually started eating the clementines but maybe it's the the thought of eating them you know the, the intention the intention of buying them and eating them or going to eat them I had a, a healing you know a healing vibe on my on my body <laughs> uh, probably not so just to remind you the only point of these sessions is for me to bore you okay I bored myself so I must have bored you too and I'll be back another time with more really really boring stories about my life So I'll see you next time. Please visit my website, jasonnewland.com. Take care yourselves. See you next time. Lots of love. Remember to eat lots of clementines. But don't buy all of them, otherwise there won't be any for me. And remember to wash your hands after you've peeled them and don't scratch your eyes because it stings. And now I bid you farewell. Bye.